You're a cuck. Bro, I didn't say I'm a cuck. I would never let like my lady f her bitch. Like, you know? What? Just I beat the you. dog out of you and do it anyway. Let me see them hands, little bro. Let me see them hands. Bro, bro, bro. I'm four foot six, four hundred eighty nine pounds. Look, look, the witch trials were a good thing. If you're a Baal worshiper or a Saturnist, get the out of the stream right now. This is the leading expert in esoteric, occult, and mysterious MMA knowledge. You can want to introduce yourself, Noam Chad. Hello, I'm Noam Chad. I'm the realest rigger online. That's what you call me. Hard R, rigger. Okay, <laughs> you have to call me that hard R. Um, you know, basically, I'm a gnome truther. Gnomes are real. Uh, I'm a devout Christian, a follower of the true Messiah, Christ. Um, and we're here to discuss some very important topics, right? Why don't we dive right in to what I think everyone wants to know. You have made some, what some people would call insane claims about the MMA guru. Other people would call them spot on. Do you want to just explain what some of those are? You've mentioned he does uh, feces rituals, um, worship Saturn. Can you just explain some of that? Okay, I could wholeheartedly explain that. First of all, I want to address the people who will say it's insane. I'm going to say you guys are insane. MMA guru is a very piggish, gluttonous figure. If you think witchcraft is beyond him, you are unhinged and schizophrenic yourself. Now, let's get into the claims. MMA guru eats poop. As a ritual, he does poo rituals. I will die on this claim. MMA guru is a coward. MMA guru is a fake man. He's a gluttonous pig. Pigs eat their own feces. The, the Canaanite god, the false deity, Baal, Baal, was worshipped with feces rituals. MMA mm -hmm. guru is from a godless land surrounded by godless people. I mean... You guys are going to say, oh, poo rituals? What are you, crazy? Hey, if I told you guys two years ago that True Gordy, True Jordy does poo rituals, you guys would have looked at me like I'm crazy. But what came out? And then they cover it up as a fetish. Hey, when MMA that guru... is a good point. That is a really good point, Noam Chad. I was about to even try to push back on you a little bit and say, well, do we have any examples of actual feces rituals within the combat sports world? <laughs> exactly exactly so wait 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 you said something i wanted to i think some people might have some questions on you mentioned uh gurus from a manaless land and i know he's from uh england i believe yes. uh, i have heard things about england that they engage in is it lilith worship or ishtar worship ishtar ishtar so ishtar if we first of all the the grand masonic lodge in England is on something called the the Heavenly Queen Street. Well, you know, it's funny. It's funny because that was actually a street name before they even had a matriarchy. Hmm. Well, you say, who's the Heavenly Queen? Well, it is quite interesting. So we look at Ishtar, the Canaanite deity. She was called the Heavenly Queen. Isn't that weird? Is it the Queen of the Heavens? Now that is weird. Yeah, I know for a, I know for a fact that England, yeah, did not have queens until much later into their uh, into their yes. er, er, aristocracy or whatever you call it, royalty. Yes, yes. And what's fascinating about this is the first queen of England was named Mary. Now you say Saint Mary, okay. right? Well, actually, you know, there's this weird occultist perversion of things that are good, right? So. Mary is actually a name associated with the title of Heavenly Queen and these pagan I'll, I'll keep it family friendly. I know this is a PG-13 channel. <laughs> these pagan uh 
as the French would say, uh, a type of bread, baguettes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Call, call Mary the Queen of Heaven in reference to the Canaanite deity, Ishtar. The English flag goes off into eight directions, like the Star of Ishtar, the symbol of chaos magic. I mean, come on, it's all there. They literally have the Star of Ishtar as a military patch. So is there a lot of overlap then? If you're saying Ishtar is a Canaanite deity, uh, Baal is also a Canaanite deity. Yeah. So would there be a lot of overlap then between the Ishtar and the Baal uh, uh, mystery cults or cults, not even mystery cults? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, hmm. well, because, you know, all, all human civilization is a continuity okay. post-flood, right? Uh -huh, oh. uh -huh. So what's the oldest uh, civilization, like big civilization, Mesopotamia? They worshipped all these pagan ones, right? Or something like, you, you know what I'm saying? So it's all this continuity. Like, uh, for example, the letter A is an upside down ox or bull. Ball. Mm -hmm. the, yeah, the we write one. basically with a, a like a Phoenician alphabet, do we not? Which is Canaanite. Yeah. Our language literally comes from these civilizations that are thousands of years old. You guys don't yeah. think there's religious overlap? I think you are. Oh, of course. Exactly. And if, if, if you don't believe this, what is wrong with you? Like, actually, what is wrong with you? <laughs> And I think there's quite enough. Whenever you started saying the stuff about MMA Guru eating uh, his own feces, it really resonated with me because I noticed the, the constant references to pooing in reverse, which to me, you poo out of your. Hey, and uh, what is the. What is not the out of your mouth, pooing out of reverse. What is the perversion of God's creation? The reversal, the inversal, right? It's, it's demon worship. He's reversing the process of pooing and doing it in reverse to worship his god, his false idol, Baal. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think that clears it up. I think anyone who has any uh, uh, disagreements or questions about that can definitely drop some comments below. I'm sure Noam Ka Chad can hop in and answer any specific details. Anyone Let's who get in. Wait, wait, I want to make this a point. Anyone who disagrees, I will throw hands with you right mm. now. Pull up to Cali. We could get these motherfucker things flying. Bah, bah, bah. You know what I'm saying? You're going to get folded, sparked out. Do something about it. I, I respect that. I was actually going to ask you uh, if you could demonstrate what you do to a demon. If mm -hmm. one uh, was in front of your computer right now, you already did. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And um, did you hear, Noam Chad, what Bryce Mitchell said on Believe You Me? Did I you watch that interview? I did, and I just want to say, Bryce Mitchell is a pure man of God. God bless Bryce Mitchell. The UFC drugged him versus Ilya Tapuria, and I, it's so yeah. apparent. They 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 were mad that he made them let allow him to have camo shorts. So, as punishment, they drugged him and fed him to another Christian man because they want the Christians going to war. They want us to fight each other. Ilya Zaperia, yeah. and pit them against each other. Yeah, it's it's obvious. It's pretty obvious what they're doing to Bryce, I think. But it's weird now that they seem to be pushing him. Have you noticed there's like a Bryce Mitchell push? They're posting believe... his entire post-fight press conference where he mentions Maui being uh, caused by lasers and stuff, which is really weird that they would even you, you put that on know YouTube. What this is? You want to know what this is, Rigo? In the cult practice, in the witch cult, like witch cults and like witchcraft, they have to admit to the rituals. So they're getting Bryce Mitchell to do it for them. And then in the end, they're going to prop him up, put him in a position to be embarrassed. Because right now, nobody, if Bryce Mitchell loses, right? Oh, well, Bryce Mitchell was never a champion. If Bryce Mitchell gets so far and then he just gets destroyed by like some like random nerd or like atheist like Michael Soy Bisping. You know, how, mm -hmm. you know how bad everything he said is going to look? Because, you know, people have short-term memories, right? Like, Yes. They, like, uh, with Natan Levy, that whole situation, they think every point that guy made was discredited by the fact that he got beat up. But look at this. Look at this. What did they do to Jesus for saying the truth? Well, they killed him. They, they killed, killed him. him. Does that discredit yeah. anything Jesus said? No. No, not in the slightest. Not, not in the slightest. Makes Nothing. it better. Makes it more powerful, if anything. Yes. Speaking of witchcraft, because you just mentioned it, 
Bryce Mitchell was speaking about his, he has an ex-girlfriend, but also a wife. His wife seems to be a good God-fearing woman. The ex-girlfriend's been getting back into his life somehow. I'm not 100% in the details, but what's important, who cares about the relationship? What's important is the allegations he made, saying that she speaks in demonic tongues. She does actual witchcraft rituals, blood magic, he insinuated, because he said, unless they're doing stuff with blood and bodily fluids, it's not real witchcraft. Uh, he said to uh, Michael Bisbee when Bisbee tried to joke it off. So do you, what, is witchcraft real? Is Bryce Mitchell talking about actually having a real witch girlfriend or is he speaking as like an uh, allegory? Is he just making an allegory? No, he's 100% honest. He's telling the complete truth. Witchcraft is entirely real. The people okay. who run the world literally take vacations to haiti i'm sorry no one's going on vacation to haiti for fun hillary clinton huh? has been in haiti just to learn witchcraft like this is real uh here's a fun one here's a fun one carl young the founder of modern psychology literally took trips to africa yeah. specifically to learn witchcraft the people who run our world all practice witchcraft i mean you don't believe it because they tell you to be atheist mm -hmm. well they're mm -hmm. over here beheading chickens and shit you know, it's more yeah. power. It's yeah, yeah, crazy. yeah. Well, they do worse things than that. In Africa, they will chop open bald men's head to get gold. You can, there's like an alchemical process that if you, something to do with bald people's heads, that if you chop them open, there's like a gold layer in their skull. Yes. And now let's apply this to Bryce Mitchell. How many women yeah. do you know say, oh, I'm not Christian, I'm spiritual? Uh, so many, so many. What does spiritual even mean? Neo, neo pagan Wiccan. That's what I take it as. Even if they don't call themselves that. If a woman joined our call right now and said they were a witch, people would be like, respect their religion. But when I call them a witch, people would act like it's disrespectful. No. You know what's hilarious? You bring up a really good point. If we brought on a straight up witch who had Baphomet tattooed uh, in between her tatas, she had a Saturn tattoo, uh, all sorts of like nodes and uh, demonic imagery on her on her skin, and she started speaking about how she sacrifices uh, chickens or whatever uh, or dogs, uh, and then you and me say we're in the same room as her, and we started throwing holy water on her. They'd call us crazy. And you wonder what that reminds me of? Tony Ferguson. Hmm. Question. If Tony Ferguson's wife wasn't a witch, why would she be offended by holy water? She wouldn't. She'd take it as a blessing. If one of my homies walked into my room right now and said, bless you and threw holy water on me, I'd be happy. I'd be like, hey, God bless you too, bro. Yeah. That's what the normal response would be. You don't usually flee the home and call the police. That is true. That's not a soul. That is true. Going back to Bryce then. Yes. He makes a couple claims about... Oh, wait, wait, wait. One last point about witchcraft. What is your opinion then on the witch trials, specifically the Salem witch trials and the witch trials that uh, occurred maybe in the uh, later medieval, early modern period in Europe? They were entirely justified. They didn't go far enough. The woman had entirely fair trials. Not all of them were even convicted. I mean... It's true. What? They had common law trials. That is true. That is true. If you cast doubt on the Salem witch trials, you cast doubt on our entire like criminal justice system. Exactly. And we talk about... Like, for example, if someone said, I'm a murderer in the modern day in a court, we would be like, oh, yeah, throw them in prison, right? Back if you then, confess to a crime, typically, yeah. Back then, they were admitting to being witches, and you want to know what these people say? Oh, they were, they were coerced into it. It was out of fear. What? They admitted to being witches. Like, come on, bro. I don't remember hearing anything about like police interrogation tactics during the Salem witch trials that were bad. If anything, the Brooklyn Five, the guys who did the the graping in the park, wilding out and shit in the park, you know those those guys? Yeah. They had worse police interrogations than the Salem witches, and they committed a, a, a less severe crime, in my personal opinion. Yes, they, 
They may have some done some things bad, maybe not, who knows. But let me tell you something, they weren't blasphemizing God, committing nope. child sacrifice to Molech, nope. trying to subvert nope. mankind. What? Nope. Those are crimes against God, let, let alone humanity, crimes against God. Absolutely. Let us know, guys, uh, anyone watching, what you think below. Do you think the witch trials were completely and entirely justified and or not? Uh, anyway, let's get back to Bryce because he brought up some really very interesting points about the rapture. Uh, so Nephilim. Could you just briefly explain what Nephilim are to anyone watching? Okay. So the fallen angels, you guys probably know what they are. You probably don't. I, would, I, I believe the planets are the fallen angels, and this is canonical scripture, and basically every pagan religion worships the planets, and they have like incarnations and whatnot. The fallen angels reproduced with human woman, creating an abomination called a Nephilim. Um, okay. they, were they were giants and all this. That's where demons come from. Uh, they're disembodied Nephilim. Okay. So like the yes. spirit of a Nephilim. Yes. The soul. The corrupted yes. soul of a Nephilim, unable to go to heaven. It's unable to go to heaven because it's literally an abomination, a crime against God. It's the perversion of yes. creation. Okay. Interesting. So, that's pretty clear. So, Nephilim are giants descended from fallen angels who bred with some of the early women on Earth. Uh, makes sense to me. And essentially devils. The demons. That would be another yeah. word you could use for Nephilim. Demons. Absolutely. Okay. So, when Bryce Mitchell talks about Nephilim being trapped under the Euphrates River... What is he talking about there? Could you uh, bring us up to date? Well, so this I the, the Great Flood killed a lot of the Nephilim's material bodies, right? Okay. You know, God had to cleanse the earth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I mean, if there was a Great Flood and you couldn't build a boat, wouldn't it be logical to try to find somewhere to hide underwater that you could seal off? Well, caves. Yeah. If you're if you're caves, a giant, caverns. If you're a giant, mm -hmm. yeah, you could. Well, they could move the massive boulder. boulders. So uh -huh. they build underground bunkers, the Nephilim, to hide in during the Great Flood underneath the Euphrates River, prophesied by the Bible, by the way, when the Euphrates uh -huh. River dries up. I will say Bryce was kind of incorrect. The, the Euphrates River isn't dried up 100% yet, but it almost is. When the Euphrates River dries up, Nephilim are said to be released from underneath it. In the Bible, you can't call yourself a Christian and say this is made up. Um... What is that in? Is that in Revelation or Revelations, what? Revelations, okay. Revelations. Okay. The, uh, when the Euphrates River dries up, Nephilim will be unleashed from underneath it, killing one third of the population of the earth. Okay. Before does the rapture happen before or after that? Are Christians raptured before the Nephilim are released? Um, the rapture is an interesting one. I believe before, but. If you technically miss the rapture, you still aren't doomed to hell. You could still make yeah, it. Yeah, you have an option. There's the last period or whatever, right? Until the yeah, final yeah, yeah. judgment day. Yeah. So that would be the period where Nephilim are roaming the earth and killing one third of people. What? So what happens if you get killed by a Nephilim? You still go get judged by God? Yes. Yes. Okay. And pure Christians are raptured before that period. Yes. True Christians. Yes. Okay. And, you know, I believe we all have holy missions on an individual level. So, you know, I think there could be because there's convoluted figures like King Solomon. King Solomon was a very gray figure. He wasn't black or white, like not racially. I'm talking about mm. motives wise. He worked with God, but also worked with demons, worked with angels. Well, he worshipped. He installed idols, did he not? Did he Solomon did not do, go through a period of idol worship? But that's what I'm saying. He did go through a period of idol yeah. worship. So he's a very convoluted figure because Chad uh -huh. Stark still got to heaven, but mm -hmm. he had these spurts and it's a very powerful message because, you know, no one's perfect. Emotions are fluid. Feelings are fluid. Everyone sins. Everyone's yeah. tempted, and especially the greater man you are, the more sin you're going to be tempted by. For yeah, sure. That's, for sure. So Solomon, it makes sense. When you're about to enter heaven, who's going to be behind you? The devil with a handful of gold. Hmm. One last temptation. Yes. Oh, I'd like to just get your take on their uh, little back and forth about evolution. So Michael Bisbean defends adamantly the theory of evolution and gravity and all of these things, yet he doesn't seem to understand a single one of them. He thinks humans evolved from monkeys. He thinks gravity is a law. 
Um, could you just maybe dive into what Bryce Mitchell is talking about with the with evolution? What do you think Whoa. about evolution? God created us in a perfect state. We were okay. perfect. The idea of evolution is blasphemous, claiming that we evolved and got better. We were perfect. What? We were in harmony with God. It's de-evolution. We've only gotten worse and more corrupted. And it's inspired by the fallen angels, the false authorities. Michael Bisping has one eye. I didn't know that meant he was entirely blind. Well, it's funny about the one-eyed symbolism of uh, Biz being because Odin, everyone knows about, well, not everyone, but a lot of people are probably familiar with the, the lore of Odin, who is a Nephilim. He is a fallen angel. Uh, maybe not a Nephilim, I guess, but he's definitely a fallen angel, 100%. Yeah. And came down to Earth on a quest for knowledge, very similar to Lucifer, okay? And bringing knowledge to people. He may even be Lucifer. Odin probably is Saturn. You know what I mean? Yes. Anyway, plucked out his own eye for knowledge. What did Michael Bisbean do? Blasphemed Jesus, made a deal with the devil for Vitor Balfour to kick his eye out of his head. And he's a self-admitted Satanist. The wrong side of history right there. That is the wrong side of history right there. Bryce Mitchell is the right side of history. Why do you think Bryce Mitchell, of all people, gets under Michael Bisbean's skin? I've never seen Michael Bisbean have that reaction he has to Bryce Mitchell, to or to Vitor Balfour as well. Like he has a specific reaction to people like Bryce and Vitor that he does not have to Khabib, Makachev, um, Bala okay. Muhammad. You know what I mean? Why? No. Because demons tremble at the truth. They're like roaches, and when you shine the light on them, they get intimidated. The name Jesus Christ is the truth, and demons shiver in fear at the name of Christ. Bryce Mitchell is bringing the name of Christ to a demon, and it's shivering and trembling in fear. The reason he doesn't have the same reaction to Islam is because the religion of Islam is a moon cult. Allah is an ancient moon deity. Um, okay. They start their fasting cycles based on the moon cycle. Like, what are what okay. the moon represents Satan, like in a certain context? Come on, it's too obvious. Yes, also represents female, the female, uh, uh soul, spirit, like earthly, yeah, spirit. yeah, like uh, susceptibility to sin and temptation and yes. lack of uh, think, discipline. Think about it, it's, yeah. the inver it's the inversal of what a woman's supposed to be. It's cold, it's stoic, but it's also chaotic. It's What's massive. a woman without a man? Yeah. That's what these women are very spiritually inclined. There's yes. nothing wrong with women being inclined towards astrology and spirituality and these yes. things and even little ri rituals, as long as it's not demonic. However, when they're left to their own devices and they abandon God because they reject their father, a lot of girls these days have a, women these days have an issue with their father. You yes. know what I mean? And then they get into this wild occult shit. Where you can straight up ask chicks and they'll be like, yeah, like I love the devil. And like, I'm, I get like devil tattoos and I, I, uh, I, they're on whatever point being shit's crazy. Michael Bisbean is straight up to me, a demonic influence in the UFC. Bryce Mitchell, holy man, holy man, holy man exactly what a man is supposed to be a hard worker a fighter a man of god god bless bryce mitchell and mm -hmm. he stands on his beliefs how many fighters do you think there are out there that agree with bryce mitchell but don't speak their mind on the platform oh so many well speaking of that that's a perfect segue i was about to bring this up sean o'malley came out about two days ago i'll play the clip hey brother i've been thinking I think you're on to something about that flat earth. So he basically is saying, like, I'm a flat earther. Bryce, you're on to something about this flat earth stuff. And they had a little back and forth. Is it very interesting because you're the one who actually told me this. Sean O'Malley has a Moloch tattoo on his chest. I'll yeah. put an image here for the uh, viewers. 
as well as a 6'9". He was branded by 6'9", a known degenerate. And not to mention, I'm sure he's probably got... what. Is there any other symbolism on O'Malley? Oh, I haven't looked too in-depth to it, but I, I always thought that tattoo on his chest was interesting. What I'm going to say is a lot of people, especially people who like use psychedelics and stuff like that, fall into worship of certain deities without knowing it. I mean... I guarantee you that tattoo on Sean O'Malley's chest is inspired by a psychedelic trip where he saw a deity, an owl-like deity, that pointed a direction for him. So it's almost unwitting Moloch worship. Yes. He's not aware necessarily, and he's falling more and more into it with the cuckoldry and the yeah. uh, open relationship stuff. Well, well, so the human state is really, there's the conscious mind and the unconscious mind. Most of what uh -huh. we do is unconscious. We Everyone knows there's God. Everyone knows all this stuff is real. But we rationalize it consciously. Because it's so... It's easier to cope. The conscious mind is a cope for what we see unconsciously. So, you could worship something. And fall into certain patterns. And fall into a certain... Cast or... Role. Without knowing you're falling into it. At the end of the day, especially a young man, a young man who, who, you know, yeah, 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 who's left. I know Sean O'Malley. I'll give him the um, a bit of what would you call it? A bit of the benefit of the doubt in his yeah. demon worship because he left his family, a young man, moved in with um, some Latinos, and then yeah. basically his life. He's been a star since a very young man. So a, a young man. But anyway, the, the flat Earth stuff. I wanted to ask you this because do you think Sean O'Malley is sincere in that or is he is this some type of psyop? Is he trying to gaslight more based fans? That's an interesting point. Maybe a little bit of both. Maybe. Because. No, I just wanted to show you something before you speak on that. I want to give you the full context here. You showed me a picture of Israel Adesanya posing behind a werewolf in Joe Rogan's studio saying, I fucked a werewolf and I liked it. What is this? Oops, my camera's on, my light's on. Can you see that clearly? That's Sean O'Malley, Joe Rogan, Tim Welch in front of the same werewolf. This is from like a day after the Flat Earth thing or maybe the same day. I'm shocked. I'm shocked right now. I am shocked right now. I think Joe Rogan is an evil man. I think he's a ringleader. Yeah. He's a handler. Yes. He hates Jesus. He's one of the ones who hates uh, Jesus. Him and Bisbee mocking Jesus and the Vitor stuff. But anyway, sorry to cut you off. So he's a ringleader, you think, of uh, of what? He's, he's a... Well, so with a lot of these underground organizations, they have handlers. So not everyone's in on it, okay. but they're in on it, if that makes any sense. So there's layers to it. I think Joe mm -hmm. Rogan, they go there and they do rituals with Joe Rogan for clout, for attention, for fame. What type of rituals? Like similar to what MMA Guru does? Similar, but they he doesn't have to explain that it's a ritual to them. He doesn't, uh, he doesn't have to. He so even the to. weed, when he makes them share his saliva and stuff, like swapping bodily fluids with them? Yes. Bro... Do not go on JRE, basically, because the entire thing's a ritual. Why do you think Kanye was so hesitant to go on to JRE? He knew. He was already deep in that. He already had a handler, so he can probably spot a handler. Exactly. Right? Exactly. No, I, I want to ask you something here. Specifically about Joe Rogan and the werewolf uh, symbolism. Joe Rogan claims that was sent to him by a fan. Could be, or maybe someone above him in the cabal. However, when they say they fucked the werewolf, is that a specific reference to doing, like, face-ace rituals with Joe Rogan? What does that mean? Well, so the pagans... I'm not a big fan of the pagans. I think that's very obvious. The pagans... You've heard about, like, the berserkers and all that? The Germanic berserkers and all that? The, the animistic stuff. Animism stuff. They would dress as animals and have uh -huh. degenerate rituals, such as certain orgies involving certain, basically feces sex, underneath mm. the full moon, 
That's mm. what the concept of a werewolf is. Someone who transforms through that. Because, I mean, huh. okay. Wh- where do you, where does the word genius come from? Do you know this? Jen. It literally does. Uh, and that's Dabble. not like a, that, that's Dabble. not like a Dabble. cope of like that's not like an etymo- etymological cope. It comes from the Latin word genere, which comes from the Arabic word jinn. Information is transferred through certain rituals, certain spirits, the spirit of information. Well, there's a reason they call bodily fluids spirits as well, don't they not? Saliva, yeah. is that not? That's yes. disgusting. And I think Joe Rogan is doing certain things with his guest. And... I can't support it. I can't support it. Well, I think we've covered all the main points I wanted to hit here. Do you have any takes? I want to ask your opinion because you're an MMA fan, obviously. We'll just go through this quick. What's your opinion on King Green versus Grant Dawson? Be honest. You can say whatever you want. King Green. Bobby Green. Oh, Bobby Green. Okay, I saw. I don't use transgender like dead names and stuff like that. I don't believe all that. But look, look. Bobby Green, Grant Dawson. I think um, Bobby Green, he's a little bit fruity, so I'm going to go with Grant Dawson. Okay, me too. Me too. Awesome. Are you excited for the Makachev Oliveira fight? Oh, uh, boy. Christians versus Islam. Oh boy, am I. I guarantee you. Because I like to pick fights with a coin flip because, you know, mm-hmm. studying MMA is literally for losers. I could get the same pick rate as someone just flipping a coin who, like, spent hours studying film, whatever that means. Well, Oliveira is illuminated by God. Oliveira is a good Christian man. He is going to knock out Islam Makachev in the first round. Okay? And I'm sidekick, so I know this. And everyone's going to cope so hard about it. Hey, look, look. Everyone's going to be saying, oh, what, what do you have to conclude this? Nothing. I'm making this up. I have no Pure reason. Pure mana to read. Full mana read. It has nothing to do with skill. I literally don't care about skill. Let's go. We'll see. Do you have any closing statements? Do you want to uh, link your channel or anything? Yes, I'm Gnome Chat on YouTube. I do some streaming, make some videos, you know, have a good time. Um... I, 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 I'm sorry that uh, your first guest had to be Eagle MMA. That's quite embarrassing for you. Like, I'm, I'm really sorry about that. Um, I'm, so, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, Christ is king. Do not subscribe to Eagle MMA. No, okay. Vice Mitchell is a king in the UFC. And his king is Christ. Christ is the king of kings. God bless. My name. I'd like to thank all my channel members. I appreciate you guys quite a bit. If without you, the channel wouldn't be possible. And a special shout out for all my Lion Tier members. Cultist Gordon, Uniform Down, Ninja Choke, Bubster Johnson, Mexican Gnome, Clarence, Mike Brannigan, Javier, Cobra Kai, Pager, Strap Jackson, Patrick Hall, Droid C, Sean Paul DeHoria, and Sam Alcatraz. Demon Bobby. Demon Mommy.